So give it one moment and we'll be live. There we are. All right. Hmm. All right. So Janine, thank you so much for joining me today. It's so great to see you. And we are completing 12 weeks of coaching together. You just, you're completing my emotionally naked dating course and it's just amazing to have you here yeah i just can't believe it's been 12 weeks already i know yeah. actually a little more because i was on yeah vacation, yeah right so yeah. <laughs> 14 weeks because we added those two those two weeks back you know for while, while benjamin and i um were away so first of all i just want to thank you so much for being here you have been such an absolute joy for me to work with and I never know when somebody comes into this course, you know, what's going to happen for them, just like you don't know, but you've had such a beautiful journey in this course. I mean, you are not the same person I met 14 weeks ago. Would you agree? Yeah, I don't think I am either. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. You're, really, you're really, like, mm -hmm. so much has changed. You're so, I mean... I can't wait to talk about it. So let's talk about where you were at when you first came on that initial call. At that point, I had been, um, my husband of 20 years had left me about a year before, and I was 55 years old and just wondering how on earth would I even venture back into this kind of dating world and just how would I go about doing it? And I just didn't want to be alone for the rest of my life. Yeah. And so you didn't have any idea how to get yourself back out there, how to really make any of this happen, right? Not really. I'd been, you know, looking around on the internet and looking at dating sites and it all just seemed so overwhelming and, um, not really very appealing. <laughs> <laughs> and had you tried some sites? Had you actually gone on and, and like kind of given some of them a shot? I, I guess like maybe one day I would go on and have a little interaction and then go dark because it became just too much for me. Oh, really? At the and time. Yeah. And that was that's scary. Like if I mean if you yeah. think about that, how long could you go going on and off and on and off? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's enough just to get yourself on there. And then every time you start and stop and start and stop, it really prolongs this whole process, right? Right. Yeah. I, I wasn't definitely not ready. Yeah. You know, when I first met you, I I maybe thought I was ready. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that. Um, I mean, I knew at that time when I came across your webinar and I listened to it, it just really, it just really touched me. It just seemed so genuine and you just had a joy that just radiated from you. And I just, I just felt that I could really trust the information that you were going to try to share with me. And so that's a leap of faith I took. And, um, at, but at the time I thought I was ready to just, okay, I'm going to work with you and I'm going to get right into it and, and go about my search, but not realizing how ill-equipped and how much information I didn't know, not even just about dating, but about myself, mm -hmm. you know, the questions and the homework asking questions about, you know, what am I looking for? What's really, really important to me? Those seem like they should be really easy questions to answer, but they weren't. They weren't at all. Um, not when you're, you know, putting it in the perspective of what you're asking the question for, what the purpose of it is going to be for. And so that has changed. So yeah you know what you want and you know what you're looking for yes yeah uh, and you got clear on that 
Yes, it was had to dig through a lot of stuff, but I did. did How did you get it. clear on that, Janine? Like, what helped you get clear on that? What were some of the things that we did that really got you clear? Well, I think the most difficult thing was the um, relationship inventories, and just to to go through those and. It was painful because, you know, I just like everyone else, I don't want to necessarily recognize all of my faults and weaknesses and, and things that I've done. Um, those are not things that a person wants to do. But on the other hand, by not doing that, you're never going to get to the core of what is you know, why, why are things not going the way that they should? And, you know, at the time, I know it took a lot longer to do it than the probably average bear, but <laughs> it was, it was a breakthrough for me. It, I learned so much from that. And now I know what I don't want to be looking for and the actions I don't want to be taking in any new relationship, if I want it to be a real relationship, oh, real cool. true love. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So. And we look at in that inventory, we look at the attachment styles of both people. And we look at, you know, regrets you might have had, right? Like, if yeah. you, and if you were to meet this person out in the world, you know, how would that feel for you? I mean, there were some questions that I think what I'm hearing really made you stop and think and reflect on those relationships, what your part was, what you were still holding resentments about. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So that whole process was, and in combination with everything else, you know, building up to that um, with the different reading materials, uh, the learning about the attachment styles and, um, you know, doing all the exercises with that as well to try to determine, you know, what style I, I am and what style many of the people I've been with have been. And mm -hmm. it's, you know, with that information now, it's going to be easier to identify when I'm interacting with somebody just to get a better handle on the situation early on, as opposed to investing your heart and soul into something that's never going to go anywhere. Right. And I think also <laughs> um, being able to identify your own attachment style and being able to switch that voice in your head, right? To know how the anxious avoidant voice, that frenemy voice will talk to you and to be able to shift that to that more loving, self-supporting. Do you feel like you are developing or have developed more self-love and self-acceptance through the course, Janine? I, I do, I do. I think, you know, when I started and I, I probably didn't realize it as much at the time, but going through this process, I think I was always just trying to be whatever anybody else wanted me to be. Mm -hmm. And always never feeling comfortable with, well, what are they thinking about what I said? Or what are they thinking about what I did? Or, you know, these kinds of things. And now I, I'm not saying I don't ever think like that, but I, I just feel so much more calmer and more like, well, it really doesn't matter what they think or if it's, you know, oh something God. totally egregious, they can tell me and we can deal with it. But for the most part, it's like, this is it, mm -hmm. you know, instead of always being so anxious and worried and pre-planning things, I, I, it just feels a lot more comfortable. Mm -hmm. Just like you're living. So, <laughs> you're so much more in your body and grounded. Do you feel that? I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we all, cause we all have that you know, I know for myself, when I dated, I was talking to somebody about this on a call um, right before this, about that anxious voice and just, you know, what, like, not knowing what we're doing. And, you know, so much of that anxiety, I mean, some of it comes, I think you'll agree, Janine, from um, just not knowing what to do. And some of it once comes from 
wanting it so badly. And some of that voice is driven from just years of disappointment and heartbreak. But, you know, I know you, you had, may, may I say that you had a, you had an, atta- uh, what was your attachment style? Can you share that? Anxious, anxious. Right. And so yeah. what would happen for you? Like when you were dating or when you were getting to know a man that you really liked, can you talk, would you be open to sharing like what that was like for you before and how this is now for you? Well, just uh, for example, if, um, if something didn't go exactly the way it should and um, the other individual um, maybe got upset or changed plans or stood me up or whatever it might be, I would immediately take the blame on myself. You know, what did I do? What I must have... I must have said something wrong. I, I need to fix this or, or whatever. And now, I mean, obviously, there's going to be cases where it is my fault. But for the most part, they may be having a bad day. And I can, I can slow my mind down now and, and think about that before I get so anxious. It's just like, hmm, they, they might be having a bad day. They're crabby something else is going on or or maybe that's the way they are and then it's good to know that too (laughs) (laughs) but it's so crazy when you start like did you do you feel I know when people come into the course they feel like I just I'm not meeting the right men or I'm you know it's just because I can't get on the right dating site or if I just had this one thing right yeah Do you, do you, like, now that you've done the course, what do you think about that? That's just all gimmicky stuff, you know, because I, you know, before I ran across your webinar, um, and even since then, things pop up on Facebook or whatever, and you look at them, and, and a lot of them are gimmicky things. Oh, if you say this, or if you do this, or if you, you know, you've got a little recipe card here. And to me, that would be just like going back in time before I did this class. Mm -hmm. And it would be just as bad because I would have to be anxious that I'm constantly, you know, jotting out the right little thing or whatever, as opposed to really, this is our life. And I wish I would have, I wish I would have approached it this way long ago, but this is our life. And really, if I'm ever going to be happy, the person has to love me for me. Uh, it can't be, you know, somebody I'm pretending to be that I think that's how he wants me to be mm-hmm. because that's going to be a recipe for failure. Or you're trying I, to people please. Yeah. Right? And, yeah. and do what you think he wants you to do rather than just being yourself and letting him be himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just, and the, with this whole idea of just really being authentic, mm-hmm. I, it's just so appealing to me now. At, when the program started, I, that was kind of daunting because authentic, I mean, you're going to tell everyone everything. No, not that, but, <laughs> but, you know, you want somebody who's going to be that way with you too. Right. And if you're both not that way it's not going to be that full real love that can exist a full real partnership right where both people are bringing all of themselves all then their truest selves right to the relationship tell me what you thought about the different pieces because there are several different things there were there was a daily drip campaign and email campaign, you know, that you came into your inbox. There were um, the modules and the meditations and the interviews with my husband, Benjamin and me, um, which uh, some people really loved. And then there were also all the Q&A calls, right? And then one-on-one coaching calls. Yeah. I, I have to say, I, I can't say that I liked one aspect more than the other. I think they just all complemented each other so well. The daily emails, um, 
you know, sometimes you'd have little exercises in there or things for a person to think about. And that information many times was just as crucial for me as the information I was learning in the modules. And then um, doing the one-on-one -on -one calls was obviously great because you were able to give me direct feedback and directions so that, you know, you were able to see my growth and give me further um, advice on moving forward. And then the group calls, just so many amazing women and just, it's just really helpful to be part of a group like that, that everyone is just, actually everyone there is just so loving and kind and caring about each other. And they're all good people just looking for love. Right. Real, real love. I love yeah. that. And you see like young on the calls, right? There are women who are younger and there are women who are much older and you really, did you see, Janine, that everybody was really struggling with the same stuff? Yeah, really. Is you that know. crazy? Yeah. <laughs> like you think, they, I'm, you know, you think I'm 50 and, you know, I'm, it's, I'm, I, it's too late or I'm so, you know, why didn't I do this sooner? And then you see somebody who's in her seventies and she's, you know, or you see somebody who's in her twenties. How did you feel about that? Well, you know, like with the older, older individuals, my father, he uh, lost my mother 15 years ago. And so he's had to kind of go through the dating process. And so I kind of watched him before I had to enter into this. And I, I've just always felt that any day we're here is there's still time. There's still time. Mm -hmm. And you're going to enjoy whatever time you have left. You can't look back and say, oh, well, gosh, I've wasted so many years of my life. That's gone. We can only try to improve and try to find full joy in the remaining life that we do have. And that's all I'm trying to do. I love and this program has been wonderful. <laughs> I'm so glad. And I, and I think too, it's like, it, again, it's like, it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter if you're, you know, 26 or 36 or 46 or, you know, 76. It's like this, the opening your heart, receiving love, you know, letting this in and being present. You know, I, I was thinking today, somebody shared on one of the calls, yes, on the call yesterday, she, one of the women who's in her seventies shared that she was ready to break it off with a man that she was, if you get a chance, watch the video because it was extraordinary. And she was very ready to just cut this off before the holidays. And it was amazing because um, what, what I noticed is that we have these moments where we have these, what I would call micro nose like knows they're just little mo little tiny moments right where we keep saying no to somebody and she would get very easily disappointed and she would be saying constantly like rejecting this man in little ways and she finally just realized what if i just stopped doing that what if i just stopped finding all these little reasons to push him away and it was so beautiful to see, you know, how we do that in our, in our lives, right? Like we say no, and we're pushing people away constantly. Or, you know, for some women, like those of us that are people pleasers, we may not be saying no, we're smothering them, <laughs> you know, by being, by being too nice. Or, but you watch this stuff on those calls and you get to see, observe what these women are doing, right? And then you get to apply it to yourself. Did you oh, right. Because so many things were applicable to me. It would be, you know, something someone else was describing and Oh, I feel exactly the same way, or I've had that similar experience. And it just, it just really helped that, you know, you're not alone here trying to navigate all of this. 
-hmm. and it's not insurmountable. It is a goal and a worthy goal. Yeah. And one of the things um, is that, what was I going to say to you? A lot of the women that come on, Janine, or that I talk to, they will say to me, I just want to do one-on-one sessions. I only want one-on-one. That's what I really want. What would you say, you know, having done the program, what would you say to that person that just wants to do one-on-one sessions from your experience with this kind of format? Well, the first time I spoke to you, I was comfortable with you and in my head, that's what I was thinking. I, I'm comfortable with this. You're sharing information with me. And I was I was pretty nervous about, you know, hopping on a call with women I don't know, you know, sharing what you want, but, you know, sometimes intimate things. And um, I wouldn't trade it. It it definitely was so much, brought so much more to the table. Mm -hmm. And then the one-on-ones that we had were just so much more impactful because we had all this other stuff that, yeah. And we were in contact more, more frequently, you know, not just once yeah. a week or every other week, but you and I had real contact on those Q and A on the calls. Yes. And, and these, right. And yes. one-on-ones and I, without sharing any details, we had some extraordinary calls, you know, both on both where you were extremely vulnerable on those Q and A calls, right? And I think for you, you know, I don't, you know, I hope what you saw there was Janine, that it was a safe space. There was so much love, right? And you were cracking open on some of those, you were really vulnerable on those calls with all the women, right? What was that like for you? (laughs) Well, you know, those, a lot of those things are things that you don't want to look at and you, I've been shoving down for my whole life. And so it was kind of astonishing for myself that I was able to do that, but that is because of the environment Mm -hmm. and how caring everyone, you especially are in guiding a person through these feelings and being able to take a look at things so that you can move forward and improve and change. Yeah. And, and if I wouldn't have had that opportunity, I don't think I would have grown as I have. Mm-hmm. And I wouldn't be this far on my path. I would be back a ways. Yeah. This and I'd is- probably be stuck too, because I wouldn't ever you know? Well, again, and without going into detail, you were also in a relate in, in a kind of long distance relationship when, when you came in, right? That's true too. Yes. But you also had, we, we were able to move you forward from that, right? Right. So that I wasn't so attached to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And so that I could see things more clearly for what they really are. Mm -hmm. Um, Just in, and you know what, also this whole process, it's helped me just with my interactions with everyone, with my family, coworkers. I just, uh, I think I'm an overall more peaceful, calm person. And I think about things in a different way before I maybe am so quick to make a judgment or comment. I have so many chills right now just hearing you talk to me because I'm so happy. Like, I'm just so happy. You know, it's, it's, um, doing what I do. I fall in love with all of you, you know, I mean, I do. And it's such a, an honor to me to be able to be on this journey with you. I I want you to know that, like the fact that you would choose to let me be, you know, I think sometimes I get to be a bit of a shepherd, right? I get to carry you from one place to the next. And that's so sacred, you know, it really is. It's such a sacred thing. And so 
Um, yeah, it's just working, you know, having you as a client has really been such a gift to me. And I want you to know that I've been able to witness your growth and help facilitate that in some part. And, um, you know, and the growth in you has been profound. I mean, really profound. You know that, right? Well, <laughs> it, no, it, whatever I've grown, I just would not have happened without having, I mean, I, I really feel like it was divine providence that I came across your webinar and that I actually sat and watched the whole thing, you mm -hmm. know, because you, you see things all the time on the internet and, you know, you just connected with me and I just don't think this could have happened without someone yeah. as gifted as you to be able to help me through this. Okay. And I, I will never be able to thank you enough. Oh, you will always have a special place in my heart. <laughs> oh, I, that means so much to me. Well, I know we still have a little more of our journey ahead of us, right? You're going to be with me for the next month. So that's really great in the continuation program. So that's really wonderful. I'm so happy. And um, so we don't have to say like goodbye. <laughs> no, we don't have to give hugs goodbye we don't now. Have to say, <laughs> officially say goodbye. But, yeah. um, um, you know, I think one of the things that I heard in what you said is that you wouldn't be, you would probably still be stuck mm -hmm. and not really, you know, maybe even in that other relationship. Can you imagine if you were still in that doing what you were doing there? No, no, I just absolutely cannot. Honestly, I mean, no. that was gut wrenching for you. That was, you were so, in, were, would you agree that you were in tremendous pain, emotional pain? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, just loving this man who couldn't, you know, who couldn't receive it or connect with you or give that back to you. And you were, you, you cared so deeply and so much, but he just, for whatever reasons, is not able to meet you there. And so it was right. heartbreaking for you. But this this has helped me, you know, person still has feelings and, yeah. you know, but this has just um, helped me to look at stuff like that in a different way yeah. and, be more able to continue on with my life as opposed to staying stuck mm -hmm. and just being miserable for the rest of my life. So, oh. well, we're not going to let that happen because you are so beautiful. <laughs> and by the way, because this is an inside job, and when we do this work, the result is that we actually become more beautiful, not just on the inside, but on the outside. And I have seen that in you. I have seen you shine. I've seen your light come back on. I've seen you get grow more beautiful throughout these 12 weeks. So I just wanna mirror that back to you, Janine. Thank you. <laughs> I'm sure people are saying something. I mean, I'm guessing that people around you notice, do they? I, I think they notice that I'm interacting differently, you know, mm -hmm. it's probably more calming to be around me rather than more nerve wracking. <laughs> well, we're going to do more work over the next week. So Honey, I send you so much love. I thank you with all my heart. Thank you for coming on the Facebook Live. This is beautiful. And, you know, if there were anybody that was signing up to do this work, I want you to have the last word. Like if some woman was really scared to pull the trigger on this and just do it, what would you say to her to, say, to convince her to say from your perspective why you feel it's worth doing? Well, number one, what do you have to lose? Everything in the past has brought you to this moment where you have an opportunity to change the future. And it is so um, expansive. There's just really no way to just put it in a little gimmicky, mm -hmm. you know, you, you just can't, but it's going to be something that's going to grow your mind, your heart, your soul, 
it will change you. It will change you and it will be the best thing you ever did for yourself. <laughs> and you had said that before the call. You yeah. had said this was the best thing I ever did for myself. Yes. Yes. Janine, you're a I would treasure. Do it again. <laughs> ah, you do it again. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, I, you know, yeah. We oh. don't get do overs, but in this case, yes, I would. <laughs> oh, I adore you, honey. I just adore you. I send you tons of love. I will see you soon. And um, yeah, let's keep going. Okay, great. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye, honey. Bye-bye.